ओके सो फाइनली एटींथ मार्च टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फोर इज हियर एंड आई एम हियर विद ऑल ऑफ यू टू डू अ रिकॉल फॉर द क्वेश्चन ऑफ ओरल एंड मैगजिलो फेशियल सर्जरी हेलो एवरीबडी आई एम डॉक्टर हिमानी जोशी आई एम द ओरिजिनल गुरु फॉर ओरल एंड मैगजिलो फेशियल सर्जरी एट डी बी एम सी आई एम डी एस आई हैव डन माई पी जी इन मैगजिलो फेशियल सर्जरी फ्रॉम मलान आजाद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डेंटल साइंसेज आई वॉज लकी दैट वेन आई गेव माई एग्जाम बैक इन I was on All India Rank Six. I was the Gujarat State Rank One, and my dream of you know doing oral surgery from either KGMC or MAMC uh, became true when I got PG at MAMC. And after that, I did my senior residency in Magdalene Facial Surgery, partly from Lady Harding Medical College, and I completed it from AIMS New Delhi. Continued there as a pool officer, and then resigned AIMS Delhi for my own. uh you know dreams to come true all right so today i am here with all of you for the neat mds 2024 a recall from oral and maxillary facial surgery so let's begin if you guys have any doubt we have the chat box open in youtube you can post all your doubts as they keep coming on the uh live chat option in the youtube all right so starting with the first question uh so this question was there in part a it was not in part b it was in part a of the exam but since we teach cleft lip um uh, in oral surgery also i thought i should include these questions also which are purely on embryogenesis of cleft lip and the uh, epidemiology or the common features of cleft lip and palate all right so the first question is which of these is true about cleft lip okay now we are talking about cleft lip remember there are two entities cleft lip palate is one entity and isolated cleft palate is another entity there are two different entities they are uh, embryologically different they are epidemiologically different their association to syndromes their uh, you know uh, uh, gender predilection everything is different so we are just question is asking about cleft lip or clp not about isolated cleft palate first option is it is most often associated with congenital syndrome or systemic deformity second option it is more common in females third option bilateral cases are more common than unilateral and fourth option is left sided cleft is more common than right side now before we discuss each and every option i am very proud to show you that this exact thing has been taught this is a screenshot of our dbmci mds notes um notes of 2023 24 and i've just taken a screenshot of our notes and we have discussed each and every point here if i if i just enlarge these notes you will be able to see that cleft is broadly classified and in this table you will have the answer to this question isolated cleft lip that is what the question is asking males are more commonly affected than females left is more commonly affected than right 80% cases are unilateral only 20% are bilateral and most of the cases are sporadic that is they do not have any genetic uh, background they, they are not associated with any syndromes okay unlike the isolated cleft palate where females are more commonly affected than males they are associated with some syndrome or the other and yahan par left right kuch nahi hota hai all right so we have discussed this in our notes we have discussed this and the time stamping is telling me telling you all where in the videos at 6 minute and 30 seconds of the cleft chapter we have discussed about this exact topic which has come in the exam so i'm very happy that this question has been there it is picked up from our notes itself all right so coming back to the questions which of these is true about cleft lip most often associated with congenital syndrome or deformity no this is a feature of isolated cleft palate that they are associated either with stickler syndrome or de george syndrome or vanderwood syndrome these are the commonly associated syndromes with cleft palate most of the cases of cleft lip are sporadic cases sporadic means suddenly happening in spurts koi unka family history nahi hogi koi genetic problems nahi hongi koi syndromic association nahi hoga just out of nowhere they are happening 
Okay, so that is why option A is wrong. Coming to option B, more common in females. We just saw that this is wrong. Cleft lip is much, much, much more common in males than females. Okay, females are more commonly affected in isolated cleft palate, just like we saw in the previous table. Bilateral cases are more common than unilateral. Again, option C is also wrong because we saw that 80% cases are unilateral. And only 20% cases are bilateral. So that is why option C is also wrong. The correct option is option D. That left-sided cleft is more common than right-sided cleft. Okay, we have discussed this previously. Now you will ask me ma'am, why? What is the reason? In nature, there is nothing like left-right. How does the body know that this is left and this is right? And why is it that left-sided clefts are more common? So the exact appropriate answer is still not known. But the anatomical basis to this thing is that whenever the body is developing, whenever the left and the right side of the body is developing as an embryogenic development in the intrauterine life, the structures of the left side fuse later than the structures of the right side. That means the right side structures fuse first and the left side structures fume, fuse next, like fuse the second. So the left side has more opportunity to develop into a deformity. Okay, the earlier everything fuses, the less is the opportunity for a cleft to develop. All right, right side jaldi fuse ho jata hai, so usme defect hone ke chance kam hota hai, kyunki timing hi bahut kam hai. Okay, whereas left side thoda late fuse hota hai, so zyada time mil jata hai. Koi usme obstruction ki wajah se, or because of some teratogenic drugs, because of some environmental cause. There is more time for the left-sided cleft to happen. This is one of the most probable reasons of why left-sided clefts are much more common than the right-sided clefts. So that is the answer to this question. Left side cleft is more common. This is true about cleft lip. Alright. Now coming to the next option. Sorry, the next question. Again, a cleft question on cleft lip. It was also in part A of the exam. Still, I am discussing this in surgery because we've been teaching this extensively in anatomy also, in embryology also and in surgery also. A full term child is born. Okay, why is this told to you in the exam? A, to increase the length of the question, just to waste a little time of yours and to say that it's not a premature child. It's not a defective child. It's a normal full term child. So, 39 weeks of pregnancy is considered as full term. All right. So, a full-term child is born with a unilateral cleft lip deformity. Now, the parents are very, very anxious and they want to know the reason that why this has happened. What did we do wrong that this child is born with a cleft lip deformity? The, the doctors have to explain them the reason. Now, what will they explain? The embryologic, embryonic basis for this defect is failure of fusion between which of these processes? Now, it's a very, very repeat question. It has been coming in the NEET exams multiple times and you all know that the answer to this question is defective fusion of the median nasal process with the lateral nasal process. Again, a direct pick from the DBMCI MDS notes of oral surgery. We have discussed this in our notes that, you know, when the face is being formed during the embryological development, the frontonasal process divides into the median nasal process, which is this green part which you see here, and the lateral nasal process, which is this purple part which you see here. So the lateral nasal process just goes up and forms the ala of the nose. Whereas this median nasal process forms the median part of the upper lip and the primary palate. Okay, the palate which is there in front of the incisive foramen, which contains the incisor teeth. Alright, and very clearly we have shown here that whenever there is a defect between failure of fusion between the median nasal process with the maxillary process, it will always give rise to a unilateral cleft lip. Alright, so when the uh, this is the lateral nasal process, this is the median nasal process and everything else is the maxillary process. So when there is a defective fusion between this green and yellow part, that is the median nasal process and the maxillary process, it will give rise to a unilateral cleft of lip with or without the cleft of primary palate. Okay, 
when there is a defective fusion between the two sides of the median nasal process that is median nasal process on the left side and median nasal process on the right side when they fuse uh, they uh, fail to fuse that causes something which is known as the median cleft lip a midline cleft lip very very rare most commonly you see a unilateral cleft lip and examiners have only and only asked you common things in the exam very very common things very very simple things have been asked in the exam and that is the reason the paper was easy all right so again this is picked up from our notes directly coming back to the question the correct answer to this question is b failure of fusion between the median nasal process and the maxillary process will give rise to unilateral cleft lip okay question number 3 i mean i can't imagine a simpler question than this there cannot be a question easier than this identify the fracture shown in the image below you all are absolutely correct this was in part b so i consider uh this in 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 the oral surgery only so this is a leaf fort 2 line all right we all know it's a leaf fort 2 line we all know that this is a leaf fort 1 fracture this pyramidal or triangular shaped fracture is a leaf fort 2 fracture and when it is a cranio maxillary disjunction something like this it is a leaf fort 3 fracture so obviously the answer to this question is b leaf fort 2 fracture all right again it's a direct pick from our note we have very nicely discussed the leaf fort classification which was given by dr rene leaf fort leaf fort 1 or horizontal guerin fracture leaf fort 2 or pyramidal fracture because it is pyramidal in shape and leaf fort 3 which is a cranio maxillary disjunction we have discussed about the rene leaf fort experiments that this particular surgeon he took a lot of skulls dried skulls and he gave them different type of trauma he threw them from a height he hit them with a hockey stick and different types of trauma he gave to the skull and he saw only three patterns of fracture in different combinations either it was a guerin level fracture or a pyramidal fracture or a leaf fort 3 fracture so he called them leaf fort fractures leaf fort 1 2 or 3 there is a modification also which is known as a marciani modification which is also something we have discussed in our classes which is there in our notes so they have just uh, you know extensified this leaf fort classification into leaf fort 1 and leaf fort 1a where there is a, also a palatal fracture leaf fort 2 with a leaf fort 2a and b leaf fort 3 leaf fort 4 leaf fort 4 is leaf fort 2 or 3 with a skull base fracture so this is the Marciani modification which was also asked a few years back in NEET and we have also discussed the treatments of leaf fort 2 and leaf fort 3 fractures, the various approaches for leaf fort 2 and 3 fractures, the bicoronal approach and the different uh, anterior and posterior approaches. Alright, so this is a straightforward question, there is not much explanation required. So the fracture in the image below is a straightforward leaf fort 2 fracture. Alright, coming to the next question. It is an incomplete question. I agree with all of you. It is an incomplete question that how much epinephrine can be administered to a patient with angina pectoris? When? In local anesthesia? In cardiac arrest? In MI? What is the situation? The examiner failed to give us a situation. There is no situation given in this question. But since we are all students of dental surgery and we all know this is related to local anesthesia, we know that we have to think in lines with local anesthesia. Okay, so how much epinephrine can be administered to a patient with angina pectoris? The correct answer is 0.036 mg. That means in around 2 cartridges, in 2 cartridges of LA, you can give 1 is to 1 lakh epinephrine. Around 2 cartridges you can give. Alright, so 0.036 is almost equal to 0.04. And that is the correct answer to this question. How? Why? I will just pick up the little and flawless dental management of the medically compromised patient, which is we all read for the, you know, the, the, the uh, medical conditions associated with local anesthesia. We have been reading this in our lectures and this is the direct line picked up from this book. Okay, the use of vasoconstrictor in local anesthetics possesses potential problems for patients with ischemic heart disease 
because of the pro- probability of precipitating a cardiac event like tachycardias arrhythmias and increased blood pressure it can even aggravate an angina into an mi okay so these are basically stressors whenever we give any stress to the patient it can you know precipitate a cardiac event and adrenaline is kind of increasing that stress your surgery is kind of increasing that stress so for that reason local anesthetic without vasoconstrictor is preferred in patients with angina pectoris it is preferred to use la without adrenaline without a vasoconstrictor if it is really necessary <coughs> to use uh, you know a vasoconstrictor with intermediate clinical risk factors and those are taking non selective beta blockers like propanolol or non so in 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 patients who are taking non selective beta blockers their hypertension will be masked it will be a masked hypertension you will not know that you know the stress adrenaline is causing an increase in the cardiac you know uh, events but the non selective beta blocker will kind of hide it so in such patients you should either avoid la or if you really have to use la you can use up to 0.36 mg of epinephrine that is two cartridges of 1 is to 1 lakh epinephrine one cartridge we all know is around 1.8 ml local anesthetic okay so around 2 ml ki do cartridges you can use and total amount of epinephrine is 0.036 which is approximately equal to 0.04 mg and this exact line has been picked up by the examiner when he is asking this question so the correct answer to this question is 0.04 i am sure most of you have marked this correctly because when we are going for a viva when we were discussing the university questions uh, in our lectures we usually discuss that this is an examiner's favorite question in viva okay in viva These are one of the favorite questions that angina ka patient hai ya MI ka patient hai ya stroke ka patient hai ya you know any 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 patient with a you know cardiac reserve is less will you give ADR or not okay you should avoid ADR and if you have to give ADR how much ADR can you give so this is a very favorite question of examiners and viva the correct answer is zero point zero four I am really disappointed you know honestly with this need because all the oral surgery questions were so straight forward so bang on so direct that I don't have anything to explain much in in this session you know I mean I'm sure most of you know the answer to these questions so calculate the Pedersen difficulty index in the image below so in the exam these markings are not there this is the image that I could find from the net and the Pedersen difficulty index was asked okay now again this is a direct pick from our notes where we have discussed the pedersen difficulty score which is based on first the spatial relationship whether it is mesoangular horizontal vertical or distoangular now you can all see that this image it's a mesoangularly impacted tooth so the score here becomes 1 plus then you have to see the depth that is the highest point of the impacted tooth okay the highest point of the impacted tooth is it above the occlusal level below the occlusal level but above the cej or below the cej so in exam it was below the cej it was a low occlusal level impaction which was given all right so the score was 3 so 1 plus 3 plus ramus relationship what is the ramus relationship of this patient is there sufficient space so obviously there is not sufficient space the space is slightly less so that means if i have to you know take the medio lateral dimension of this tooth and if it was straight does it have enough space to erupt into the oral cavity no it does not have enough space if the space was enough it was 1 if the space was 1 not enough that is class 2 that means it is reduced space so the score will be 2 here okay so the correct answer is 1 plus 3 plus 2 which is equal to 6 it's a repeat question which we have done in our pyqs which we have done in our notes in the question bank in every form we have done these questions in the arjuna batch sessions everywhere we have done this question very very nicely so 
the correct answer see you can be confused between 5 and 6 okay i agree that nobody should be confused whether it is mesoangular horizontal vertical or distoangular very clearly it is mesoangular so that becomes one okay now there can be position whether it is 2 or 3 that can be a confusion okay so position can be either b or c okay in which case the score is either 2 or 3 okay and the class okay the class is very clearly 2 the class is not 1 the class is not 3 because if it is it would if it was 1 the ramus would have been you know somewhere here and bahut sari jagah hoti tooth ke piche aaram se rub karne ke so that was 1 if it was 3 if it was say class 3 then the ramus would have been somewhere here pura ka pura tooth ramus ke andar ghusa hota bilkul jagah nahi hoti so class is definitely So one is sure, two is sure. So either it is three plus two or three plus three. So either the score is five or the score is six. And the examiner has very nicely put the options as eight, four, six, three. So even if you are confused, your confusion can only be between option five and option six. And the correct option here is only option six. There's no option five. All right. So the correct answer to this question becomes six. All right. Again, a repeat question from the topic of TMJ. A five-year-old boy was operated for TMJ ankylosis with costochondral graft. We all know, according to the Caban's protocol, whenever it is a childhood ankylosis, the treatment is either interpositional arthroplasty with CCG, or it is an it is a distraction osteogenesis for neocondylogenesis we have discussed this in our lectures so the only two treatment options in childhood ankylosis is either ccg or distraction osteogenesis all right so five year old boy mein unhone kya kiya they have done a ccg grafting eight years later he comes with a deviation of mouth opening to the non operated side okay what is the cause again direct pick from dbmci notes we have shown you costochondral graft disadvantage overgrowth seedha seedha straight forward question i have even shown you the images from my own surgery that how we have harvested the rib graft or the costochondral graft in a child we have placed it into the ankylotic area we have fixed it with a screw and how few years later it has caused overgrowth of the calf because of overgrowth we had to remove this much part of the overgrown graft to bring back the deviated into the normal side okay in the notes you will also see how the ccg is being harvested how the ankylotic mass is cut how the coronoidectomy is done this is how we harvest the rib the cartilage the rib with a rib shear or a rib cutter the cartilage is harvested with a knife this is how we insert this is how we fix it with screws everything beautifully described in our notes and again a question from direct pick from our notes i can't stop boasting because very very simple straight forward questions from the syllabus that we have covered okay now correct answer to this question as we have discussed is graft overgrowth just to explain you in very short imagine this is a normal mandible this is a normal mandible whenever there is a ankylosis imagine this is a patient with tmj ankylosis okay so this is the ankylotic side and this is the normal side okay now this is a case of unilateral tmj ankylosis now when this patient will open the mouth this side is normal this joint is normal okay but this joint is non functional so when the patient will open the mouth this joint will move and this joint which should move ideally like this will not move so in case of ankylosis there is deviation to ipsilateral side there is deviation of the chin to the ipsilateral side that is to the side of ankylosis now in this question what is happening is you have operated the patient okay you have done the surgery you have done your surgery and what you have done is so this is your gap arthroplasty 
again this is your normal mandible and this is the costochondral graft that you have fixed in this patient okay now this is the new joint that you have created in this patient so this is the costochondral graft okay you have fixed it with screws here this is the costal uh, rib bone this is the costal cartilage and we all know that apart from liver and bone these are the two only organs in the body which heal by regeneration rest everywhere in the body there is only repair and in this two organs there is one more thing which is the costal cartilage that is the costal cartilage or the rib cartilage has the ability to grow by regeneration so when you harvest the rib cartilage from the rib area the donor site also corrects itself the donor site also regenerates and the recipient site where you have put your rib that also regenerates so this costal cartilage this red dark red part here that has the ability to grow but the growth is unregulated it has a tendency to overgrow that is the biggest drawback or disadvantage of using a costochondral graft now what happens when it overgrows overgrows means as compared to the normal condyle it is overgrowing that means its length is increasing 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 like this so now what will happen 8 years later when this patient is coming back to you now mouth opening is normal but because of this overgrown condyle when the patient is opening his mouth the deviation from the normal side is this much the opening from the abnormal side or the operated side is this much so this will cause deviation of mouth opening to the non operated side that means to the contralateral side and that is the reason why if it was see suppose the question asked that there is deviation again to the operated side that means it is re ankylosis ki wapas se wahan pe ankylosis ho gaya again towards the operated side there is deviation but the question is not that the question is deviation to the non operated side that means deviation to the contralateral side that will happen only when this side is longer than the normal side the correct answer is graft overgrowth i hope all of you those who are watching this video live are able to understand just give me a thumbs up everybody if you are able to understand why graft overgrowth is the correct answer to this question just give me a thumbs up everybody all right so uh coming to the next question this was a slightly newer question although we have discussed about arthrocentesis in our internal derangement part of the notes of the of the recordings and of the live classes still it's a slightly tricky question and even if you don't know a lot about arthrocentesis you can rule out options and you can mark all right okay so savan has understood everything i'm very happy savan thank you so much for that confirmation all of these is true for arthrocentesis of tm joint except that means you have to choose the untrue option anatomical landmarks are laid on the canthal tragal line which is also called as the holmut helsing line this is absolutely correct ringer's lactate 250 to 300 ml solution is injected into the superior joint space this is also absolutely correct you can use ringer lactate you can use normal saline some people use um, at the end they use ibuprofen solution also in the end to cause pain relief but basically the most appropriate solution for arthrocentesis has been ringer's lactate solution so this is absolutely correct option c is inferior joint space lavage which pushes the disc away from the fossa and reduces inflammatory mediators now this part of the question this part of the option is correct arthrocentesis does cause a reduction in the inflammatory mediators but most commonly we do arthrocentesis in the superior joint space see the volume of the superior joint space is around 1.2 ml the volume of the inferior joint space is only 0.9 ml 
although there have been a few scientists there have been a few few surgeons who have done an inferior joint space arthrocentesis also but that is not very common the most common place of doing arthrocentesis is the superior joint space which is why this is not a very appropriate option the other part is it pushes the disc away from the fossa this never ever happens arthrocentesis pressure can never be so much that it pushes the disc away from the fossa outside the joint and does something miraculously no not at all this part of the option is absolutely incorrect which is why all are true except i will choose answer c as the wrong answer option d also let's let's discuss it is known to reduce joint pain and inflammation obviously when you flush out all the inflammatory mediators from the joint it reduces the pain which is caused by inflammation all right so this is also correct so the correct answer for question 7 is c all right very quickly let us discuss the holman helsing line so this is the canthotragal line from the outer canthus of the eye okay so this is the outer canthus we all know this is the medial canthus and this is the lateral or the outer canthus so from the outer canthus of the eye to the tragus of the ear you can see this is the tragus of the ear so when we are doing arthrocentesis we draw a line from the outer canthus to the tragus and on that line 10 mm anterior 2 mm inferior we put some landmarks and on those landmarks we put two needles there are two types of arthrocentesis there is a single needle arthrocentesis but more commonly and more appropriately we do a double needle arthrocentesis imagine an oral surgeon all the joints in the body they are big joints okay knee joint hip joint uh, you know take any joint they are big big joints and imagine the bichara chhotu sa temporomandibular joint the total volume of the temporomandibular joint is 2 ml and out of that the superior joint space is only 1.2 ml in that 1.2 ml the oral surgeon is doing some palpations making some landmarks and putting two needles two wide bore needles into the superior joint space you have to make sure that you don't puncture the skull base and enter into the glenoid fossa enter into the cranium you have to make sure you don't go posteriorly and enter into the external auditory meatus you have to be very very careful with your landmarks very very precise in your technique and just be there into this small little temporomandibular joint which is there which is the superior joint space here it will be very very precise very very you know bang on and i am very very happy whenever i am doing an arthrocentesis because it gives me a very you know god complex that wah wow, itne chote se joint mein bhi we put two needles and we are do, able to do a flushing a lavage without any ultrasound guidance okay so basically using the landmarks on the canthotragal line we put two large bore needles with one needle we push ringer lactate solution and with the other needle the solution comes out what happens is in this process there is washing out of all the inflammatory mediators as the same suggest arthro arthros means joint and centesis centesis means lavage lavage or flushing out okay so because of the temporomandibular disorder because of rheumatoid arthritis because of any problem if there is a lot of inflammation going on in the joint you give the opportunity some you give the joint some opportunity to heal by flushing out all the inflammatory mediators all the cytokines and all those painful things which are collected into the joint due to inflammation so we do it with one needle and let the fluid out from the other needle then we do it with the other needle and let the fluid out come out from the other needle so like that we lavage we use around 200 to 300 ml solution the best solution to do it as the question suggest is the rl solution and basically we flush out the joint so this is about the arthrocentesis of the temporomandibular joint please uh, keep texting if there is any concern or keep liking uh, the stuff that you see here all right coming to the next question identify the instrument shown in the image below okay we don't use it very often in maxillofacial surgery the place where we use this instrument is in cancer surgery 
where we have to do a resection of mandible as soon as this exam was over one of my students called me i will uh, hide his face one of the female students actually called me and said ma'am on 3rd march you have taken a morning mentorship session and in that session you have discussed the giggly saw and i was very happy that the giggly saw has been discussed in that session and uh, that is how the student remembered and i i had purchased a giggly saw when i was a pg i had gone to a conference in uh, one of the national conferences of oral surgery and like a young you know enthusiastic post graduate resident i bought this giggly saw but i wanted to you know gift it to my ot that you know ma'am use this in my in your surgeries but uh, it is not used very often it is mostly used when you have to do a blunt dis- blunt resection of a pathology mostly in cases of cancers when you have to do a real resection and the soft tissue also needs to be sacrificed because you know this is basically a barbed wire This is a barbed wire, मतलब एक कांटे वाला तार है बहुत सारे कांटे कांटे वाला तार है एंड दिस इज हुक सो वट इज माई मैंडेबल एंड दिस इज अल कार्सिनोमा और दिस इज अंडेबल और यू नो कार्सिनोमा विच इज नीड टू बी रिसेक्टेड आई विल पुट माई गिगली सो लिंगली बकली द वायर आई विल पुट लिंगली बकली आई विल होल्ड इट विद माई हैंडल एंड जुप 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 इन फोर और फाइव सेकेंड I will be able to resect the mandible. Similarly, I will do the same thing on the other side. So very quickly, instead of using a burr and slowly, slowly, slowly cutting through the whole mandible, or using a piezoelectric which is even slower, or using a oscillating saw which is also slow, this giggly saw is very quickly like just zup zup zup, and you can cut the whole mandible, resect the mandible. Obviously, you can't use it in maxilla, you can't use it in mid face. It is mainly for the mandible for the resection cases. and uh, i had shown this giggly saw in the morning mentorship session so i'm sure most of you know it is the giggly saw all right so this image is the giggly saw okay coming to the next question systemic toxicity of la is best described as now we all know this has been again discussed in our uh, notes but instead of showing you the notes i am actually showing you the phenomenon okay what happens what is the CNS effect of lignocaine or any amide local anesthetic which is commonly used in the dental practice so this is our normal brain okay this is our normal brain in our normal brain the facilitatory impulse that means which will cause excitation and the inhibitory impulse which will cause CNS depression they are almost equal okay they are rather they are equal now in the initial uh stages in the very low dose in very low dose and remember we are talking about the systemic effects systemic effect means when you have given lignocaine intravenously that means either you have given intravenous lignocaine or you have given excessive lignocaine which has gone into the circulation only then it will cause the systemic effects till lignocaine is there in the peripheral tissue it will never cause systemic effects when it starts going into the circulation it will start having systemic effects so at very low doses it will have an anti convulsant effect okay it will have an anti convulsant effect that means it is used as a anti convulsant drug which is very very good okay as the dose increases now there is convulsant effect what is convulsion convulsion means seizure convulsion means fit or seizure okay at very low doses when the lignocaine is there in the circulation it is a good thing we give it as an anti convulsant effect when the dose slightly increases there is a seizure effect there is a cns stimulation causing seizure see the inhibitory impulse is getting thinner when there is a moderate overdose the inhibitory impulse gets thinner so this is the 
प्री कन्वर्जेंट स्टेज दिस इज अ प्री कन्वर्जेंट जस्ट बिफोर कन्वर्जन इनिबिटरी इंपल्स कम हो गई है एक्साइटेटरी या फेसिलिटेटरी इंपल्स बढ़ गई है या दैट इज नॉर्मल एक्साइटेटरी इंपल्स इज नॉर्मल बट इनिबिटरी इंपल्स इज गॉन थिनर when the dose even further increases the inhibitory impulse is completely cut off there is only facilitatory impulse causing increased triggering which is known as seizure or convulsion so in moderate to severe overdose there is convulsion and when that dose is also exceeded when there is a severe severe overdose ye to pehle inhibit ho chuka hai the facilitatory impulse is also gone okay first the inhibitory impulse gets thinner then the inhibitory impulse is gone which causes seizure later the excitatory impulse is also gone so this causes a generalized cns depression okay if i have to pick up lines from malamate so at higher or the convulsive blood levels the inhibitory function is entirely depressed okay after that what happens pure facilitatory input without inhibitions produces a tonic clonic activity which is known as a tonic clonic seizure or convulsion okay further if further there is an increase in the anesthetic oh sorry further if there is a further increase in anesthetic blood level it will lead to depression of the facilitatory as well as the inhibitory pathway producing a generalized cns depression okay so cns or cvs almost similar hota hai pehle trigger hota hai to pehle heart rate badhega uh, respiratory rate badhega sab kuch badhega then there will be a cvs depression similarly cns mein pehle pre convulsant effect hoga fir convulsion hoga that is seizure then there will be a cns depression so coming back to the question systemic toxicity of la will be best described as convulsions followed by depression okay so initially there is an anti convulsant effect which we don't cause as toxicity this is not toxicity anti convulsant effect is not a toxicity it is a desired effect of la when you give it systemically then there is a pre convulsant effect in mild toxicity then there is a convulsant effect in moderate toxicity and then there is a cns depression effect in severe toxicity so the question is asking you about toxicity then the correct answer will be convulsant followed by depression so that is the correct answer to this question okay so navin is asking me where did you get the question paper beta i was sitting in the exam every year i take this exam it is not compulsory for me but you know mujhe satisfaction hi nahi hota hai unless i sit in the exam and take my questions of oral surgery every year i go to the exam i take the questions of oral surgery myself so that i know what is the exact language of the question what is the exact what is that examiner is asking us and uh, what is it that you know you should know every year i take my own questions and i also help with the other subject recall so that's where i get the questions all right so i i hope you agree with me that this was the exact question please clarify it post depression consultation or vice versa first just remember this flow chart just remember this flow chart first anti convulsant effect which we don't call as toxicity second is pre convulsant effect third is convulsant effect and four is the cns complete depression okay till convulsion it is known as excitation and then it is known as depression so i hope that answers your question mds aspirant 
ओके कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ दीज सर्जिकल ऑर्थोडोंटिक प्रोसीजर्स इज लीस्ट स्टेबल ऑल राइट मैक्सिलरी अप पोजिशनिंग मैक्सिलरी सेटबैक मैक्सिलरी मैंडुलर एडवांसमेंट मैंडुलर सेटबैक और मैक्सिलरी बाइंडिंग कमिंग टू द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ ऑर्थोनैथिक सर्जरी अगेन अ डायरेक्ट पिक फ्रॉम अवर नोट्स डायरेक्ट पिक फ्रॉम अवर लेक्चर्स वी हैव डिस्कस द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ ऑर्थोनैथिक सर्जरी इज वेरी वेरी नाइसली तो वेन एवर देर इज अ गैप बिटवीन बोन्स वेन एवर द सर्जरी कॉजेज अ गैप बिटवीन द बोन्स इट विल ऑलवेज बी लेस स्टेबल Remember this funda. Whenever there is a gap, even if you put bone graft, even if you do anything, whenever there is a gap, it will always be less stable. Okay. So maxillary impaction, मतलब maxilla को mid face में घुसा दिया है. Very very stable. Mandibular advancement, there is a good overlap when you do BSSO. Very stable. Chin, obviously there is always an overlap with other bone. Very very stable. So these three surgeries are the most stable surgeries. Whereas problematic surgeries mandibular setback although there is a good overlap but what is the reason for the mandibular setback to be unstable terigo masseteric link we have discussed this multiple times in our lectures in our tnd in our uh, you know rapid revision everywhere terigo masseteric link what is terigo masseteric link mandible angle buckly there is masseter medially there is medial pterygoid and at the angle okay so if i have to draw it here so if i have to draw it here if this is my mandible okay so uh buckly this is a masseter muscle okay we know labially or buckly on the outer cortex this is masseter Similarly, on the inner cortex, there is medial pterygoid on the inner side, on the lingual side. And in the inferior border, masseter and medial pterygoid meet into a tendon, which is known as pterygo masseteric sling. And this pterygo masseteric sling is a very very sturdy very very rigid structure whenever you try to push back the mandible the pterygo masseteric sling at the time of surgery you are putting the patient under ga under ga there is a muscle relaxant effect there are all the muscles are relaxed so this pterygo masseteric sling is shant wo aaram se leta hua hai it is not causing any problem ab jitna bhi set back karoge it will go back very easily as soon as the patient comes out of ga as soon as the muscle relaxant effect is gone the muscle tone comes back the pterygo masseteric sling will push your distal segment back into its original position causing a relapse in your orthognathic surgery so because of that a mandibular setback is a very very unstable very very problematic surgery you can do only very limited setbacks not very large setbacks similarly maxillary down fracture and maxillary widening when you cause maxillary down fracture you are basically separating the maxilla from the rest of the mid face it is basically creating a gap between the maxilla and the rest of the mid face so whenever there is a gap between the bones it will always be unstable okay similarly when i am doing a orthognathic surgery for maxillary widening that means i am doing my leaf fort one i am splitting my maxilla into half and i am taking the two parts of maxilla left and right what is happening basically i am creating a gap in the midline so whenever there is a gap the surgery will always be unstable after the surgery the segments will collapse so mandibular setback because of pterygo masseteric sling maxillary down fracture and maxillary widening these are the least stable orthognathic surgeries and that is what is asked in the exam mandibular maxillary superior positioning wahan to impaction ho raha hai koi problem hi nahi hai mandibular advancement 
वहां पे भी आ, कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं क्योंकि अच्छा ओवरलैप है मैंडिबुलर सेटबैक येस दैट इज ऑल्सो एन अनस्टेबल सर्जरी बट इफ यू हैव टू कंपेयर बिटवीन मैंडिबुलर सेटबैक एंड मैक्सिलरी वाइडनिंग द लीस्ट स्टेबल रिमेंबर इन एग्जाम यू हैव टू चूज द बेस्ट ऑप्शन यू ऑलवेज हैव टू चूज द बेस्ट ऑप्शन सो ऑप्शन सी एंड डी आर क्लोज द बेस्ट ऑप्शन इज ऑलवेज मैक्सिलरी वाइडनिंग that is why whenever you have to do a maxillary widening after growth completion we do something which is known as a sarpe what is sarpe surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion we always do a sarpe which is a surgically assisted rapid palatal expansion so if this is my palate I have done a leaf fort one. I have cut my maxilla from here. I have also split my palate into two parts. Now, instead of surgically taking the two parts apart, I will fix a distractor here. I will fix a hyrax kind of a distractor here, and slowly, slowly, I will turn the distractor, and slowly, slowly, I will take the two bones apart, so that there is no gap. Instead of a gap, there is distraction osteogenesis. There is new bone formation, and along with bone. All the soft tissues will also regenerate. They will form new soft tissues. So that is a more stable procedure instead of direct surgical maxillary widening. All right. So the correct answer to question number ten is maxillary widening. Okay. Coming to next question again, very very easy question. Twenty-three year old boy. Okay so 23 year old boy had a road traffic accident and sustains a fracture of the angle of mandible so young boy angle fracture which of these is the best treatment option for him no image was given in this question but the only hint was a young boy it's a young boy okay ऑक्लूजन के बारे में कुछ भी नहीं बात करी हुई है दे हैव नॉट टॉक्ड अबाउट वेदर द ऑक्लूजन इज डिस्प्लेस्ड एंड डिस्प्लेस्ड द ओनली थिंग इज इट्स अ यंग बॉय यू ओनली वांट अ सिंपल ट्रीटमेंट फॉर दिस बॉय ओके नाउ व्हाट आर द ऑप्शंस टू मेनी प्लेट्स वन एट द सुपीरियर वन एट द इंफीरियर बॉर्डर वी नो दैट व्हेनेवर वी हैव टू फॉलो द शैम्पीज प्रिंसिपल्स व्हेनेवर देयर इज अ फ्रैक्चर एंटीरियर टू द मेंटल फोरामेन दैट इज इफ इट इज अ सिम्फाइसिस और अ पैरासिम्फाइसिस फ्रैक्चर we always to put two mini plates whenever there is a fracture posterior to the mental foramen that is whether it's a body or an angle fracture we always put a single mini plate in the neutral zone <coughs> that is the protocol when there is a single isolated fracture of the mandible so according to that the option number a is wrong Coming to option number B, one mini plate on the external oblique ridge, which spans the mandible mediolaterally. That's the absolutely correct uh, answer. One recon plate at the inferior border. Now this can also be a correct option, but it is incomplete. It is an incomplete answer. Why? Whenever you are using a recon plate, you always have to use it with a tension band. Tension band can be in the form of mini plate at the upper border or arch bar on the teeth. So if option C was one recon plate at the inferior border along with a mini plate at the upper border or along with an arch bar on the teeth which acts as a tension band then option c would be a correct option option c is an incomplete option that is why it is wrong okay okay if deranged occlusion was there in the exam still if the occlusion is deranged still the answer will not change even if you are bringing the occlusion back to its position 
one recon played between the superior and inferior border is absolutely wrong you can only put recon plate on the inferior border because recon plate uses bicortical screws and bicortical screws cannot be used in the middle because it can cause injury to the inferior alveolar neurovascular bundle it can cause injury to the tooth roots for this reason this is also a wrong option the correct option is one mini plate on the external oblique ridge mediolaterally very happy to say that this is also picked up directly from our notes from our dbmci notes where we have discussed the body and angle fracture if you follow the champis principle single mini plate at the neutral zone you can see here there is a single mini plate at the angle fracture from on the external oblique ridge going from lateral to the medial so basically we use the s shaped or the propeller shaped plate okay we have discussed this in our lectures we've also discussed the various approaches we've also discussed the special instrument which is the transbuccal trocar cannula which we use in especially in cases of angle fractures okay so we've discussed everything about angle fracture in great depth all right so again a direct pick from our notes and the correct answer to this question is one mini plate on the external oblique ridge mediolaterally okay this is also a repeat question even if the occlusion is deranged first you will do an imf to bring the occlusion to correct position then you will put the plate after putting the plate you can release the imf so that is the complete treatment for this patient okay so that's the so imf is done in all these cases whenever you are doing an orif whenever you are doing an open reduction internal fixation whether you are using mini plate whether you are using recon plate whatever you are using the first step is always to do an imf whether the occlusion is deranged whether the occlusion is not deranged the purpose of imf is to stabilize the occlusion if it is deranged you will correct the occlusion and then do the imf if it is not deranged you will anyways do the imf you can do a quick imf using arch bar you can do an imf with iv eyelet you can use an imf with direct wiring you can do imf with imf screws so there are various ways of doing imf in the ot so the first step is always imf after imf you do the plating after imf you put the plate in this case it will be a single champis plate at the external oblique ridge okay so this is how in our notes and in our lectures we have used we have shown you the use of the transbuccal trocar cannula we have shown you how to put an angle plate in the s shaped fashion s shaped single mini plate and this is how actual clinical pictures we have showed you in our lectures live recorded and in the notes all right so uh, i'm sure those who have read the notes have definitely marked this answer correctly okay so the correct answer is single mini plate on the external oblique ridge okay what is the meaning of marginal resection again question from our notes when we have discussed pathology we have discussed tumors we have discussed the gold uptron and marks criteria for treatment of odontogenic tumors all right so when we discussed about resection there are three types of resections that we can do first is a resection where the continuity is not affected remember we are talking about resections in the mandible everywhere else the resection continuity is not a problem okay so what is the meaning of this so if i am doing if this is my mandible and if this is a tumor i can do resection with normal bone of this much part this kind of resection where the continuity of the mandible is maintained is known as an n block resection or marginal resection okay the second type suppose the tumor suppose a tumor is like this so for this resection i have to remove the whole segment of mandible okay this much mandible i have to remove that means the continuity of my mandible is lost 
I have to put a reconstruction plate to continue the continuity of my mandible. This kind of resection is known as a discontinuity defect or a defect which causes a continuity problem which is known as a segmental resection. Okay. And the third type of resection, suppose the tumor has caused involvement of whole one side of mandible. So in that case, I will remove the mandible along with the joint, along with the condyle. Okay, when you remove the condyle, that means you are actually removing the joint. Okay, joint is known as articulation. And this kind of resection is known as a disarticulation resection. Okay, which is the hemimandibulectomy or total mandibulectomy if you are doing it on both the sides. Okay, so we have discussed this before. Again, it is from our notes. What is the meaning of marginal resection? Marginal resection means when you are preserving the margins of mandible. End block or marginal resection. Only the marginal part of the tumor is removed. Resection with normal bone margins? No, that is not the meaning of marginal resection. Resection without discontinuity of mandible. Yes, that is the correct answer. Creation of a bony window that is known as marsupialization. It is not one of the treatments of tumors of odontogenic origin. And resection with discontinuity of mandible. This is known as segmental resection. Okay, so that is the correct answer. Resection without discontinuity of mandible. Okay. Sandeep, we will take your doubt at the end of this session and uh, I will tell you the answer to your question also. Okay. Now, this is a very easy question. I don't know why they have put it in part B. This should ideally be in part A. Uh, but still, if they've put it in part B and questions on oral surgery are not many, I have taken it into oral surgery because we have discussed it multiple times into oral surgery. Third thing is the mnemonic that we very commonly use in oral surgery that, you know, the superior uh, meatus will drain the sphenoidal and the posterior ethmoidal sinus. The middle meatus will drain everything. And the inferior meatus will drain the nasolacrimal duct. Okay. So, the middle anterior ethmoidal sinus, middle ethmoidal sinus, maxillary sinus, everything will drain into the middle meatus. What will not drain is the posterior ethmoidal sinus. That will drain into the superior uh, meatus along with the sphenoidal sinus. Okay, so the correct answer to this question is the posterior ethmoidal sinus. That is the answer. Straightforward questions from anatomy. Somehow it was asked in part B. Still, I am taking it. We have discussed when we have discussed the nasoorbitoethmoidal fractures. In that, we have been taken, uh, discussed in detail the nasolacrimal duct injuries and how the nasolacrimal duct injuries, uh, you know, happen when there is a noe fracture and how the nasolacrimal duct, you know, it, it, it drains into the inferior meatus of nose. Okay. So, I have always told you very easy ways of remembering these things. So, remember, uh, whenever we cry, okay, whenever we cry, uh, initially we sob. So, girls usually sob a lot. So, what happens is, whatever tear is being produced, whatever tear, so if this is my eye, okay, you know, this is my lacrimal gland. From the lacrimal gland, all the tear will be coming and it will be collecting through the canaliculi into the lacrimal sac. From the lacrimal sac, it will drain into the inferior meatus via the nasolacrimal duct, as you can see in our notes. Okay, so this is the lacrimal gland. It produces the tear, which, you know, kind of wet the conjunctiva. Normally, the tear production and the tear drainage is equal. Okay, so it is collected by the canaliculi into the lacrimal sac. It goes into the nasolacrimal duct and it drains into the inferior meatus of nose. Okay, now when the tear production is high and drainage is low and nose ka we know the natural drainage of nose is posteriorly. So we do, so that jo bhi tear our nose mein aa hai, usko hum andar leke ja sake. So the, through the post nasal drip, we take it into our nasopharynx. Okay, so whenever tear secretion is more than tear ability of the tears to drain, 
it causes watering of the eye so in cases of noe fracture when there is a injury to the nasolacrimal duct the tear will not drain through the nld it will drain through the eye even when the patient is not crying and this is known as epiphora this is known as crocodile tears or epiphora that means the patient is not crying still the eyes are watering okay so all these concepts we have discussed in much detail when we are doing the noe fractures and the drainage of various uh, you know uh, maxillary sphenoidal ethmoidal and uh, frontal sinuses we have done in our lectures very very nicely okay so the correct answer is posterior ethmoidal sinus all right yes sir sim we've already discussed sir sim so things brings us to the end of oral surgery recall we will quickly take your uh, doubt so sandeep is asking me how can we put a plate in the medial and lateral direction we can put a plate just like we do a third molar removal okay so when we do a third molar removal if this is my second molar i will do a wards incision okay so i will put a crestal incision like this a triangular flap and distally also i will give a releasing incision so i will open a trapezoidal flap when i open my trapezoidal flap in this region i will slightly reflect the lingual tissues also okay i can very easily adapt the plate in a s fashion like this so two screws will go on the buccal side two screws will go on the lingual side now you correct that it is very very difficult to place the screw on the superior ascending ramus and to place the screw on the lingual border that is why we use a special instrument for this purpose to help us in putting those superior screws in putting those medial screws or the superior screws and that instrument is known as a trans buccal trocar and cannula that is known as a trans buccal trocar and cannula okay so that is with the help of this instrument we can put the plate in a s fashion both buccally so most of the screws are buccally but one or two screws go into the ascending ramus and into the medial side also that is why that is how this plate is able to resist the forces of tension as well as the forces of torsion that is why we put this propeller or s shape plate in the angle region okay um okay i am a little fast somebody saying that i am a little fast uh maybe because i was there at the exam hall on time i recently started fasting on mondays so i am fasting and maybe because i'm very very excited to see the oral surgery questions uh because they were very easy questions and two kids are waiting for me at home so maybe because of all these compounded reasons i am doing this recall a little fast but i hope you've understood everything and we are still open to doubts if anybody of you has any doubt you can still ask me i will explain everything again and if you have doubt in concepts then conceptually to understand everything conceptually you should go back to the video still if you've got any doubts uh you guys can just message me your doubts and everything on the on the youtube page and we'll take your doubts again i hope this exam gives you a lot of hope very soon the results will be out today is a day to chill just relax and chill okay today and tomorrow just chill eat something good and uh, sleep well and duniya ko dekhenge parso se okay so all the best everybody uh this is me signing off from oral surgery good night everyone you can leave your feedbacks also on the on the youtube session okay